Yes, the um, observer interact was very necessary at that point because we didn't have any literature on lean to greenhouses in this climate. Um, we had to go around and look at ones that were made and most of them were only single glass and most of them were, were not even trying to save energy. We had the energy then, you know, that was the, the feeling in, on the whole. So we had to observe, we must have visited about 20 or 30 greenhouses and I don't call them um, winter, gar winter gardens or I don't call them conservatories, I call them greenhouses because they are productive, they are um, and it's very much the lean to greenhouse and that's not so often either at that time. Permaculture has really had a, an effect, quite a big effect in, uh, with people who even don't know permaculture in Germany because now there are lots of lean to uh, greenhouses or conservatories uh, all around the place. Yeah, well, catches to our energy is, uh, was obviously, it goes through the whole film in point of fact. It's uh, the, the energy of the sun to make use of it as most as possible. And the storage was partly given with the brick walls that were there. We used those and, um, and we left them. We didn't seal them off. We, we allowed the vapor to go through and, um, and therefore we had the, the warmth of the sun pushing the cool air in in, in the summer and so I always have, even when it's more over 30 degrees outside, I always have something like 22 or 24 degrees inside. It's, people think I have air conditioning on. Obtaining yield is the difference between a conservatory and a greenhouse because I, we, in the storage system, we built in beds which are connected up to Mother Earth and where the microorganisms and the worms can move through even in the winter time. And so I obtain a yield um, not only in heat, I obtain a yield in different types of fruits that wouldn't go here otherwise. And um, yeah. Apply self-regulation is in all moving parts that we have them moving with again with the sun through um, the production of electricity with the photovoltaics. Um, so we even have a special photovoltaic part also for the warm water and the pump for the warm water. It's, it's a system within a system and, uh, there, and we did a lot of research on that and we had to take them out and put them in again to make them more efficient by uh, doing a feedback after two or three years. Well, the whole thing, the whole house is a renewal resource. It was supposed to be pulled down and it would usually be pulled down. But that's the whole settlement in the meantime. Lebensgarten has renovated all its houses, almost all. Not always to zero energy standard, but at least to low energy standard.
that was really difficult because uh, usually you throw away the um, things that you don't need out of the house at the beginning of the renovation. There's a big amount of, of refuse and um, especially debris, the, the old bricks, etc. And we tried to, well, we did recycle a lot of the bricks. Uh, we also used them partly in the floors. And um, we even recycled the oak doors, which were fantastic. I mean, talk about life cycle analysis there. When they built it, it was quite clear that the doors and the, uh, especially the outside doors and windows, were going to last as long as the brick itself because they were pure oak and very well um, detailed. That's just an example. Yeah, the design from patterns was the idea, first of all, not just a greenhouse, but a wraparound greenhouse, so that the whole uh, part of the building that was, would be heated by the sun uh, could be extended. And yeah, that was the, this, that was the pattern. The pattern was the wraparound lean-to greenhouse. And then the detail came up with this idea that we weren't having thermal pain, but we're having double glass, one out, one from inside. And that really meant a huge um, savings of heating costs in the deep winter of Germany. Yeah, our, yeah, instead of um, having lots of rooms within the house and then having different uh, problems of the solar heat, we, we pulled down almost all the inner walls, both in the ground floor and in the, in the upper floor. And we made open space uh, um, plan out of it, which was quite good for um, a couple. It's now a little difficult with the reuse um, where um, it's more a connection of a, a single people and uh, we do have to use doors and, and, and curtains and things like that. But we try to keep the air moving all the time because you see the air is the is the movement of the warmth at the moment where where it leaves the direct sun. Yeah, that was um, the point where we decided when we moved in, we just moved into one room and the, and, and the makeshift kitchen. Um, and we would build around us so that we get used to the what we had and find out um, and a lot of people do that when they move into a new flat you know and and we decided to go this direction take an old house and to to reuse the whole thing and um, so we we took our time and it took us almost three years before we had the, the house finished and it was somewhat of a strain uh, on just the normal living but um, somewhere or other we were ready for it because we were so fed up with the solutions in the middle of the 1980s that were considered uh, feasible and economic and we wanted to prove something else.
Yes, uh, that was the idea then that we would have three different climates. That's the diversity that we brought into it. So we have well, actually four because we have the inside climate, which is pretty well uh, always somewhere about uh, 21 degrees. Um, and we have uh, the three greenhouses east, south and, and west, which uh, I explained are um, sunny G Germany. Uh, the west is, uh, is northern Italy and the south is south Greece. So we have the diversity of plants then in there. We have the diversity of the experience of the warmth and the light. It's amazing. You want, you strive after the light when you live in, in a greenhouse. Yes. Uh, now, you know, the marginal, I'll start with that because that's the typical thing with the East Greenhouse. Most people who are into um, active solar systems, they don't even think of the East side. But in point of fact, that's, you know, at least four hours of the sun every day. And you see, it's not only the, the direct sun that we're talking about, we're talking about the global radiation as well and the sun coming through the clouds, because that uh, also is a gain. And um, so we have used the marginal, uh, especially in the east, but we've, we also use the edge effect by, um, by not, not having straight walls all the way through, but a curve or a bend in them, we make the whole thing uh, stronger with less um, sizes of materials and therefore allowing more sun in. Yes, going from greenhouse to inside, uh, um, uh, we used, the, we used um, the marginal in opening up parts of the building right down to the floor so that we could put in uh, French windows rather than normal windows right down to the floor. We also use the marginal uh, in, the, in the reflecting pond. It's not a straight pond. It's, it's, a, it's a pond with just pure curves in it. And this is mainly so that you get different angles of the sun and so you get different plants coming at different times, stacking in time. And um, so there's a hell of a lot behind the, the you know, the vision or the, behind the view of what you see now. Yeah, we, that was a big thing with us, uh, trying to get that in. And in point of fact, we had been working on that already uh, before we learned about permaculture, because um, it just seems to be ridiculous. You know, most flat roofs in our climate, you have to uh, completely renovate or do some sort of of um, repairing every 10 or 15 years. And there are, um, and we hadn't got flat roofs, but we'd been already doing that in other renovations elsewhere, uh, working on, um, so old buildings to recycle them. And, uh, uh, so, <clears throat> so in point of fact, every time we would think of a new pattern or a new system, 
uh, within the building time, we during the building period, we would be looking at what happens now in 15 or 20 years by the next renovation, because it will be standards will change, etc. And how do you build them in? So you try to build in things like standard sizes. You try to build in things that uh, are multiplied without being boring. And how do you do that uh, with, you could say, um, adding on and not building necessarily anew? This was, this was uh, in the back of our design systems all the time. So it was really important and you don't see that either. This, that, that was a lot of the discussion. And so I'm, I was very glad and my wife too that we were both roughly the same uh, profession and, and, and definitely the whole idea of uh, waste not, want not came into our um, uh, thinking. And especially became more important because of our, our preoccupation with permaculture.